Two weeks ago, when I was cleaning the isopod terrarium, I saw some isopod babies. Now, this didn't come as a complete surprise, as I had seen an isopod with a filled brood pouch some days before that. Anyway, more on the babies later. I am going to completely clean the terrarium, including substrate, because over some time mold has started to develop. I kept cleaning the terrarium, but eventually some spores and bits of mold were left in the substrate, which resulted in me having to replace all the bark and leaves every week. So now I'm removing all the bark and leaves and placing the isopods in a temporary container. And now comes the most annoying part, getting rid of the substrate. You may be wondering, why is that so annoying? Well, here's why. A lot of isopods, including babies, just love to walk around in there. And they're very easy to miss. To overcome this, I go through every piece of substrate and make sure there's no isopods on it. And then throw it away. These are pieces of coconut husk. The substrate consists of coconut husk and coconut fiber. Even though this method is very time consuming, it is worth it because it's very effective. The isopods that were in here kept trying to escape, even though they never succeeded because the edges were too steep and they'd fall off. I decided to give the isopods a piece of carrot and some bark to make them stop doing that. Here you can see two isopods already grazing on the bark. And they're all interested in exploring. So the diversion worked. But I still haven't caught all of them yet. Jackpot! At this point the carrot has caught the attention of some babies as well. Now that all the substrate is out of the terrarium, I can clean it. I started this colony a few months ago with 12 adult isopods. I would like to know how many there are now. Do you want to count together with me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Wow, twelve adult isopods. That means they're all still alive. Isopods have a life expectancy of approximately two years. So that means all the isopods have lived about 15% of their lives in this colony. Wow! After I've added new substrate and baked leaves and bark, I added the isopods to their clean terrarium, which they made really easy for me. This isopod has a different color. It's sort of brown reddish with spots of normal isopod color. Very pretty. This is a baby isopod. It gives me horror flashbacks of parasitic isopods. Here's a few babies together. A day later, the isopods have settled into their newly furnished home. Now let's talk about these babies. Where do they come from? 
Well, I will explain that to you in full detail. Let's start with the mating behavior. As isopods mate in total darkness, wait, did I already tell you that these specific isopods are Procellio scarer? I feel like I should mention that somewhere in the video. As isopods mate in total darkness, I don't have any footage to show you, which is probably for the better. I do, however, have a very powerful tool at my disposal, your imagination. So, why don't you close your eyes and try to see what I'm telling you. Come on, close them. Okay, here we go. When a male isopod sees a female that he thinks wants to mate, he starts to flirt a little. He starts dancing around with his antennae and eventually lets them rest on top of the female. If at this point she isn't scared away by his terrible moves, he climbs on top of her. There he spends a few minutes licking her head and tapping on her back with his front legs. Then he moves to one side of the female and bends his body under her in order to transfer sperm with his two penises in her genital opening on the opposite side. This transfer takes a few minutes. Are you still following? When this step is completed, it is repeated on the other side, because just like the males, females have twice the amount of reproductive organs as us humans, of which I am also one. After all of this, she pregnant. Well, okay, technically not, but I just really wanted to say she pregnant. The sperm is stored and used to fertilize eggs, which are shed soon after a female molts. The eggs are brooded by the female, just like any proper crustacean would do in a brood pouch called the marsupium. Marsupial females also have a marsupium, which is why they're called marsupials. Interestingly enough, the conditions in the marsupium of aquatic and terrestrial isopods don't differ. Both are filled with water. After six to seven weeks, nymphs are born, which stay in the marsupium for a few more days. The nymphs only have six segments in the thorax and six pairs of legs. After the first molt, they get the seventh segment and seventh pair of legs, just like adults. And that's how you get the baby isopods you saw roaming around earlier. You can open your eyes now, but you already did, didn't you? Now that we talked about isopod reproduction, could you tell me what these are? No, <laughs> they're lungs, you dirty animal. Speaking of dirty animals, isopods poop a lot, which is also a reason I would have completely cleaned the terrarium by now anyway, if it weren't for the mold. The isopods don't really mind the mold anyway. They eat it in fact, but it's just not aesthetically pleasing. If you weren't in love with terrestrial isopods after my previous isopod video, you're a little weird. But if you aren't in love with them after seeing these isopod babes, you're crazy! Well, I suppose that's about it for today. I will end this video with some older footage of isopods eating some carrot. If you want to see more of these videos, well, you're going to have to subscribe, blah, 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 blah. Thanks for watching.